Good morning everyone. In today's video, I'm going to explain for you uh, the concept of uh, point attractor in Dynamo. Uh, in the coming videos, I will uh, focus on the attractors in uh, Dynamo and how uh, we can get benefit out of them, the types available of attractors, and especially I'm going to focus in the beginning uh, on, on a, a single point attractor and how it works and I will call this part uh, as a, a single point attractor theory as I will explain in a very basic uh, example as you can see in here the concept behind it and or the theory behind it and I'm going to make the second video after that uh, that's actually gonna uh, focus on a practical architecture example of where we can use this theoretical part uh, in a real life example so what we have in here is a point uh, with the grids and uh, down we will find the relationship between each point of those and then based on that do a specific function like changing the radius of the scales and as you can see that closer to the point you goes the 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 smaller the distance and that's that goes with the smaller the radius the radius of the circle itself so when i'm going to move this point you will notice that uh, you know the grid will respond and the the circles goes smaller wherever the point you know just move and here I'm just moving the X and Y of that point and you can see the overall uh, <clears throat> grids and circles change based on whatever feed you go or whatever information you actually provide here in this uh, in this two sliders anyway so let's uh, let's close this one and, and start uh, a fresh uh, dynamo file so I'm going to new here uh, in it uh, we need to uh, you know uh, to work on this type of example we need two things we need a grid of points and we also need a single point that represents the single point attractor. So I'll go, uh, I'll go here and create a range. And in the range, I'll just provide 20 as 20 points. So I'm going to give that to the range end, assuming that the start of it will be zero. So what we're going to have here, a 21 point or uh, a range of point increasing by one, because I left this as a default, the steps which will give me, you know, one as a default value of an incremental ending up by the end of, uh, you know, the number provided here in the end, which is 20. So the overall actual values provided is 21. Now that that's been done, we need to create points out of that range. And if you create, give that sequence to the X, as you can see here, it will generate a sequence of points here from uh, the 0 to 20 and if you provide the same value to the Y it will go diagonal uh, as you can see in both in X and Y that it move 1 in this X 1 in Y and so on so we need to change that in the lacing to make cross products to create the grids that we actually need so this is basically what we need to create this the first part actual of the grid we technically need here another extra node which is a flatten uh, to make this uh, single point attractor work perfectly but I will leave that for you I'll show you what actually will happen without the flatten and then I will add the flatten to finalize the first part which is the grid so technically this we can group uh, later on we create this this first part as the grid I will need now a point so I'll just hit control and uh, move that guy here to create a single point and in the single point instead of a range I'll have uh, sliders and I'll have two numericals uh, slider so this one and this one you can go ahead and uh, you know name them X and uh, Y if you like or whatever whatever the name you know you desire uh, provide those X and Y to the points we can just move that aside and we can see that's our point I can just just move it around uh, the way you like and you can see it's move <clears throat> sorry and it will move the its location based on the changes that you do here I believe it's uh, too big to go as a uh, hundred so I'll make it 30 and same here as the max value 30 so I'll get uh, a better you know it's 
I think it's even 30 too much. Anyway, so you get a better, you know, a better movement as this goes as a smaller range and instead of from zero to hundred. Anywho, so I'll place it here, whatever you think. That's the second part, you know, uh, from uh, uh, this node, uh, this uh, custom node that we are making, or the, uh, the sorry, the uh, single point attractor. So that's uh, the second part of it. Now we need to know the relationship between each points that we have in this grid uh, relationship to this specific point. And we're going to just go here and just write distance. And we need here a geometry distance too. And this guy will just simply take the inputs, which is the, you know, the points we have around 441 as the geometry and the other which is the single point we have and the result is basically the distance between each point from those grid to the specific point we have and we will notice that Dynamo is actually arranging them as uh, a sub list and those lists represent you know even the rows the columns or the rows we have here in the grid as the points actually you know organized as rows and columns so that's a little bit of annoying thing you know the list and the sub list that we have in here and that's directly reflected to a 441 element but that's again important it's actually arranged i think in a 20 uh, sub list as you can see here anyway i will close that we're gonna get back to this soon but we now have the distances between each point to the single point uh, attractor point here. Now I need to, uh, you know, if I if I just connect that to the circle, let me show you if I connect that to the circle. Uh, just create a circle here by point and radius. And I can just take those points as the, uh, you know, the center for them. And it's gonna be, you know, you know very crowded here. And the radius, of course, it's one, so it's crowded enough. But if you want to make it crazily crowded, just go ahead and connect whatever distances you have, which is really huge. You know, the values is you know like 16 and 15, which is way much more bigger than the the radiuses that uh, actually one. You know, is the distance between each one of them, and that's a radius, and which is the overall twice the time to create the diameter. It's already big enough. So when you give 16 and such values as you know you can see here it will be as you see the results really crazy so what we really need to get better understanding of this is to scale the overall you know or to range the overall radiuses that we have or the distances we have into something make more sense and more perceivable by us so i will go and use a range map Yeah, sorry, remap range. And in it, the the concept of this, uh, it's just you're going to give a group of numbers, which is those guys. And you're going to assume or, or, or re rescale them into a minimum and maximum value. So whatever the maximum here, it will go to the maximum value you're going to provide. Whatever the minimum is, will go to the minimum value you provide here. So let's assume we want the maximum value to be 1. That's the maximum. So if this 16 is the maximum, this will be 1, for example. I don't know what is the maximum value, but I'm assuming that. And the minimum, let's say it's uh, a 0.2 or whatever I think, and the smaller number, depending on what you want to do. And the result will be, you know, have a look. It's just like it's scaling the overall 16 to 0.4, and if you go down, this numbers goes down with it to reach the minimum value which is 0.2 which is something like this one i think the, the smallest value anyway anyway so now if i connect this i will get way much better and more perceivable results you know as you can see here that uh <clears throat> that the the points actually uh, have a better under we can actually see them better as the radiuses goes smaller and it's more understandable by us to see 1 to 0.2 rather 16 and 14 and again if you don't like the one as it's big as you can see it's here in the faraway area 
you can just reduce that I don't know maybe 0 0.5 if you want it to be you know touching exactly at the quadrants if you want I don't know I didn't like that maybe 0.8 uh, that will give you you know uh, an overall uh, smaller radius it depends on what you need again the, the scale now back to the point where I told you you know that you need to something here in order to make the, the group work perfectly because this is not a correct uh, single point attractor because if you see it's like a line here it's an imaginary line and you know that uh, run wherever the location of I think X or Y and the overall thing having the same you know radiuses and that's incorrect because you need if this is point if this point here those guys should be bigger as we go that way and the reason is that happen again because of the way the point has been organized as I as I told you it's, it's obviously it's taking the first one or the second one uh, from each row and assuming that goes for the rest you know of you know the whole row that we have and that's we we don't want it and it's happened because the way those points are actually organized so what we need here is a flat or flatten uh, flatten node here that's this guy will just cancel the way those points has been organized as a list or a sub list and create one list out of that and that will foresee there's no sub list as you can see and that will force Dynamo to de to make you know the whole point act in a single way and measure the distance to the specific point, ignoring the way that they are being organized as rows and columns. So let's do the thing you know again. So instead of giving this point to the geometry distance, I will give this full grid free you know free points to the geometry, and then I will give that again to the to the center here and now we get better results now you see that this point at specific location when you go that way or that way or any any way you know the circle goes bigger and bigger as they go far further from the point itself and when we move you can see that it's, it's look like a circle here you know you can see it loud and clear uh, around uh, the point that we have and as we f go further the circles goes bigger and bigger and again you can control uh, that maybe make it 0.1 you just go ahead and uh, test it by yourself you can notice that uh, the computer is going slower each time I work and uh, I think uh, it's better uh, to turn off the automatic into manual if you like let's make this 0.5 see now that's uh, another way to look at that I don't know for some reason I like the 0.8 and that give you you know uh, you know exaggeration between the radiuses uh, between the closest to the point and farther to it anyway it's really good uh, exercise to you know group things just going to control G and we can call that uh, our grid and that's the point that's the single point attractor so that's it guys uh, I will try in the next video to uh, provide for you uh, uh, the practical part for this theoretical frame that I showed in this video so that's the theoretical part in the next one I'll try to find some architectural example to practice this uh, in a real life scenario I wish that you find this uh, video useful thank you very much for watching and have a good day